Oh my god. What happened to AJ? Poor AJ. What happened to him? The same thing that was always going to happen to AJ. Usyk. If you like the kind of work that I do here on this channel, hit or miss. And if I don't half ass these predictions, I, they usually hit. Do consider supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form you see fit. Rate, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the description if you want to send your boy some money. Anyway, sometimes I, I really don't want to tell you guys what it is that I'm thinking when it comes to some of these um, fights, matches, occurrences, things happening out there. Because I don't think most people out there deserve to know the truth. And I'm not even saying that I hold the truth, but they're not interested in that, okay? Some of us are. So we think independently. We help each other out, but we think independently. We look for clues and cues, and we try to put two and two together, okay? But most people aren't interested in that. So I'm just going to drop some hints. Remember how AJ, we're now talking about what happened to Anthony Joshua. Remember when AJ handed over his titles to Ruiz before the first fight? Yeah? In that face-off? And then he really handed them over? Look at the bottom, the very bottom, a little bit right of center of the screen, okay? What colors are those? Why was AJ rocking those colors throughout the build-up? The little bit of a build-up that we saw to this fight. Why was he rocking those colors? Synchronicity. A message from the so-called gods of boxing. They ain't gods. They think they are. Synchronicity as the channel Clown World. And again... A lot of people listening to this don't even deserve, won't even be able to understand, are not open-minded enough to even consider some of the things that Clown World is noticing in his videos, but he likes to use the word synchronicity. He makes no strong declarative statement either way it would seem. He just points things out, right? Why was AJ rocking Ukrainian colors all the way throughout the build-up of the fight? It's not like Luko Zadzade sport drink doesn't have other color ways, schemes. I don't know. Synchronicity. So, look at the room, right? AJ's got his face plastered all over the room. His belts are on display, right? Everybody there is kissing his ass. You're doing a great job, champ. Brilliant boxing. Yeah. And what was the narrative going into the fight, right? We're talking about what happened to AJ. Hubris. What was the narrative going into the fight, right? He just needs to hit Usyk. And it's over. What was I saying? What, what about Usyk hitting him? <laughs> Why isn't anybody talking about that? Right? <laughs> The uppercut, right? AJ, AJ just needs to land an uppercut. I mean, Usyk's not known for his, but he's got one of those two. Where was the uppercut? And perhaps one other thing that Usyk has, since we did talk about Usyk's defense, uh, R-E, the uppercut, right? He rides uppercuts by jumping up in the air. He's not that easy to hit with an uppercut, right? Oh, AJ just, need, AJ just needs to land the right hand because everybody lands the right hand on Usyk. And there I am showing you that, no, that's not exactly true. It's very difficult to land the right hand cleanly on Usyk, right? And if AJ has the right hand, what about Usyk's left hand, right? The whole narrative, not, not the whole narrative, but the overwhelming narrative, come, at least coming out of the UK and, you know, other places as well, was what AJ going to do? AJ this, AJ that, blah, 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 because... Usyk was just gonna, that was my reply, 
stand there and let them hit them, right, and not hit them back. And maybe because, you know, when it comes to these A-sides like Canelo, that's kind of what people have been seeing. So subconsciously on some level, they expect that every single time some massive cash cow A-side gets in the ring with, you know, a nobody from nowhere. It's Maybe that's just what the majority expect. I don't know. But the whole point of my little rant here is that everyone was just feeding AJ's ego. Everyone still is feeding AJ's ego. What happened to AJ? Oh, sick. <laughs> Get it through your thick heads. Especially AJ and his team. That's what happened. But just as that was extremely difficult to see for so many people. I mean, the amount of disrespect they gave to Usyk. The guy that has been knocked out. The guy that has been hurt multiple times was going to knock out easily within the first six round, rounds. The guy that has never even really been seriously hurt. No way Gassiev could hit any harder than AJ. Well, guess what? Gassiev proved that put in the same situation all things considered, all things being equal, hits a lot harder than AJ. But, you know, you put them both on the heavy bag and you measure their power punch, it's probably comparable. What, you don't think Garcia stops Martin? <laughs> okay. Anyway. That's what happened to AJ. Usyk happened. And just as a lot of people couldn't see that, and I think there were pundits who did see that because it started dawning on them the day before the fight, but they were so concerned with feeding AJ's ego and kissing ass all the way throughout the lead-up to the fight, they just dismissed Usyk as if he were a nobody. And what, you don't think that A gave AJ well, the confidence to take the fight, which in a way, also probably made him overconfident. They didn't, they didn't tell him the deal, the real deal. They handled, handled AJ with baby gloves on. And now, now they want to be all smart and, and they want to blame AJ, right? When, when AJ's winning, it's Team GB, right? We all in this together. When he's losing, oh, it's all his fault. Fire McCracken. And I'm not saying that these aren't correct to say that, that, that it's incorrect to say that. I'm not saying that. But, you know, it's interesting how the narrative switches. And feeding into AJ's ego, feeding his ego, rather, and AJ feeling himself, right? When perhaps it's not deserved, you know, brings about the kind of results that it brought about. The guy got in there and had no clue what to do with Usyk, apart from, you know, maybe two and a half rounds or here and there. So right before the fight, some of the pundits that were just, including Tyson Fury, is that what happened to Tyson Fury? He, he spoke his mind, right? Off the cuff, right off the bat, saying AJ will lose or probably lose. There's a big chance he loses. And maybe then someone got to him saying, hey, you know, Team GB. So he changed his tune. And right before the fight, he told you, Usyk's going to beat him. So kissing AJ's ass, I mean, go on ahead. Have fun with that. Call everybody who tries to tell you what they see. We could be wrong, but, you know, <laughs> we look at the information, a lot of us anyway, that's right before us. We try to analyze it and we draw our own conclusions, right or wrong. That's what we do. Most of these people saying, you know, AJ right hand, AJ uppercut, AJ by knockout within the first six rounds. As soon as he hits them, that's it, right? Those people are just lemmings following the crowd, following the lamestream narrative, right? And that's the biggest problem facing us as humanity today. Nobody is able to think for themselves. 
Explain to me, dear COVIDists, how a dead thing mutates. Break that down. Anyway, so it's it's all about AJ all the damn time, right? Whether we're praising him, and again, I'm, you know, generalizing. Whether we're praising him or we're bashing him, it's all about AJ, right? No one's really looking at Usyk. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just AJ did this and th this and that wrong, right? It's not about what Usyk did right. <laughs> Good luck adjusting to the rematch with that kind of a mindset. Good luck. That's only half the struggle. Well, a quarter, if you will, right? What did he do right? What did he do wrong? Likewise with Usyk, what he, did he do right and what did he do wrong? But right now, the narrative is... What did AJ do wrong? So 25% of what it should be if indeed you are interested in AJ improving. And, you know, just as I told you guys that I wasn't really pushing for Canelo to fight Triple G uh, when Canelo had that WBC belt. And the reason for that was because I didn't think it was going to be very competitive. Canelo needed to get better so he could get the best versus the best at their best. I don't mind. Um watching AJ improve and then putting him in the ring with Usyk maybe a year down the line, maybe a year and a half, maybe two, three fights down the line, right? Something like that. But they'll probably put him in there next because, you know, money and hubris and I don't know what. Uh, they're going to get this uh, thing sewn a little bit better, if you know what I mean. Hint, hint, right? They're going to get three Howard Fosters to judge and Howard Foster's uh, son to referee the fight. And when Usyk is doing well, the rounds are going to be two minutes and a half. And when AJ is doing well, they're going to be three minutes. Okay, I'm just kidding. There was nothing wrong with that 12th round. Everything went according to the rules. Anyway, I there's a lot of things I see. That AJ could do better. I mean, just go listen to my videos telling you why he won't beat Usyk because of this, 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 and that. Right? What he does wrong and what Usyk does right. While also talking about, you know, less so because it was less important about the things that Usyk does incorrectly that AJ can take advantage of. Right? But I, I will. I, I think I will. I feel like I will make a video talking about how AJ can improve. Uh, to be able to better do to do better against Usyk, maybe even beat him, but uh, I'm not gonna do that till the week of the fight. Okay, why? Because most of you that do deserve it don't want it, and those of you that don't, don't. Thanks for watching.